Hey, hey, hey. All right. If you haven't already, um, you want to watch the two videos that are linked in this PowerPoint. And so go ahead and stop the video and look, click on where it says Bozeman Science integumentary video, and then also watch Why Do We Wear Sunscreen. Those are both cute videos to get us started. But the integumentary system is basically skin and nails and hair. And so um, when, we talk, when you hear the word integumentary, from now on, think about skin, hair, and nails. And so in this PowerPoint video, I, I just want to review um, the integumentary system. Okay, so functions of the skin, if you think about it, it's kind of common sense. Um, it helps with homeostasis. I mean, it really helps maintain temperature, pH, it helps keep uh, infections out. I mean, think about how cold you would be if you didn't have skin, right? Okay, so functions, it says, obviously, it's a protective covering, and you want to know these functions. Uh, it's a barrier against bacteria or you know, viruses. It helps you not get dehydrated. You don't lose as much water. You can feel, so sensory receptors, but you can feel touch and heat and all sorts of feelings. Uh, it excretes sweat and oil in the form of waste. It helps produce vitamin D. That's probably one you, not, you had not considered. Vitamin D in sunlight your, in the sunlight, your skin produces vitamin D. Um, and that's really helpful for strong bones. We know that. Helps also, oh, I think probably the most important one or the most obvious one would be that it regulates body temperature. Okay, so this, those are the functions of the skin. You want to make sure and know those. There are three large layers to the skin. EPI means upon or over on the outside. So the epidermis is the top layer, the outermost layer, the layer that's on top. It's made up of stratified squamous epithelium. So you'll remember that from the tissue lecture that it's got um, lots of layers of flat cells, but it's got this basement membrane. Remember that dead layer at the end of epithelial cells. And the reason that basement membrane is significant, I mean, it's dead cells, but oftentimes cancer will originate there or start there and then spread to other parts of the body. So that's uh, one of the focuses on the basement membrane. Okay, so epidermis is on the outermost. The second layer is the dermis. It's the middle layer, inner layer. It's thicker, so it's thicker of the, of the skin. It's made out of connective tissue. So it's actually got blood, um, it's got some fat in it, it's got lots of uh, different types of cells. And then contains collagenous and elastic fiber. So it's strong and stretchy, uh, it's firm, and that's what we really think of skin as, right? And then subcutaneous would be below the dermis. So der epidermis, dermis, then subcutaneous. So subcutaneous is below. It's insulating. It's got lots of fat. We know that adipose means fat. It's not actually a part of the skin, but it does have blood vessels. So the dermis and epidermis both have blood vessels. Okay, so look at this picture. And by looking at this, you'll be able to see here up here is the epidermis, the very top layer. So it's really thin. All it has is those stratified squamous cells and that basement membrane. This big area is the dermis. Now, just take a look at the dermis. It's got the red and blue. That's a little too far, I guess. The red and blue uh, blood supply, right? Arteries and veins. It's got the hair follicle, and the, that's the hair. Okay, it's also got these little squigglies. Those are sweat glands. Okay, and it's also got, look, it's got a muscle. It's got, right here, this is an oil gland. So the dermis has a lot of stuff in it, right? It's got blood supply, it's got hair, oil, sweat, muscles. And then the subcutaneous, which is the bottom, 
that yellow stuff right there, that's fat. So it does have blood supply. Yes, we can see that, but it's also got a fat layer. Okay, so a layer, a slide just on the epidermis. So we already said epidermis outer layer. Now, you do want to know that this layer, unlike the other two, lack blood vessels. So highlight that. Uh, lacks blood vessels. It doesn't have a blood supply. So how does it get its food? How does the epidermis get its food? Well, the food diffuses up, diffusion, the movement of particles from high to low concentration, Food and oxygen diffuse up from the dermis. Now, there's five layers to the epidermis. Luckily, you only have to know two of them. But if you watch the Bozeman video, you kind of got an idea of all five of them. Again, if you haven't watched that, you want to. Okay, stratum corneum is the dead epithelial cells. Those are the ones that slough off. And I even read an article, not a science article, just a common article, that um, the dust in your house was made up of dead skin cells. And so every two weeks your skin comes off and you get all new skin. Not like a snake at the same time, but one at a time. And so that's what dust is in your house. So it makes me want to go home and dust. And then the deepest layer, so the top one is stratum corneum. And the fifth one, the bottom one, is stratum basal. Okay, and you want to know about the stratum basal because that's where the cells are growing. And so they push up from that bottom layer um, right in uh, cell reproduction. Remember, that is cell division. Uh-oh. So right here, right, cell division. Okay, that's not too good, but you can read it. Cell division right there. So the stratum basal, that's where cell division is occurring. And then the cells are pushing up, which is making the stratum corneum slough off. So, and also you want to make sure for the test, how does the epidermis get food? The epidermis gets nutrients from the dermis. So nutrients comes from the dermis. It's diffusing through the dermis. So write both of those things in. Okay, melanocytes, M-E-L-A-N, means brown or tan or pigmented. So um, this is what gives us our skin color. It lies in the deepest portion of the epidermis. It produces a dark pigment called melanin. That's what makes our skin color brown. And what's really interesting to me is that all skin color, unless you have albinism, all skin color is a shade of brown. And so the melanocytes produce this melon, and based on the number of melon that you produce, that determines your skin color. So it's actually the amount of melon produced... that determines the color, right? So um, someone with really dark skin versus someone with lighter skin, they both make the pigment melon. It's the same pigment, the same segment of DNA makes that protein. But some of us have more of that protein than others. So you have more copies of the gene and that's what makes skin colors different. Okay, some, I always try to include these um, clinical notes from the textbook. And so, take a second and, ooh. there we go, take a second and look at them. Pressure ulcers are very important for people who are in the bed for a long time. And so, oftentimes, when a patient's lying in the bed, they'll get, we call them bed sores or um, pressure ulcers on their ankles, on their hips. Um, on their on their back even, on their shoulders, where they're laying in bed all the time. And the problem is that they tunnel out, that's the term used, but they get deeper and deeper and deeper. And 
you run a risk of infection. And so that's the major problem with pressure ulcers. But take a second and look at the rest of those. Um, and the, I think those page numbers may be wrong because they're from an old edition. But take a second and look at um, what the book says about all of these things. Okay, there's also an insert in your book about indoor tanning, and we know that indoor tanning um, is not good for us. We know that it can cause uh, the melanocytes to mutate and can even cause skin cancer, right? So exposure to sunlight or tanning beds, and we know tanning beds are worse than sunlight, uh, can can make it makes the skin darker, and really the darkening of the skin is a natural uh, side effect to protect your skin. Right? It's a natural um, reflex to protect your skin. But uh, basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma arise from that epithelial cells. Um, melanomas arise from the melanocyte. So that's the two differences uh, there. And then the melanomas are least common, so only about 4%, but 80% of the death. So melanomas is, you know, melanoma is not a good... Um, thing that you want to have. Okay, looking at the dermis. So this is the second one. The thicker layer. We already said that the epidermis didn't have blood vessels and the dermis does. That's how the epidermis gets its food, remember. Um, it contains you want to know all this. It has hair follicles. It has sebaceous glands. Okay, right out beside sebaceous glands. Those are oil. So just so when you're studying, you'll know what that is. Oil glands. And then sweat glands. There are two different layers of the dermis called dermal papillae and reticular layer. Okay, so um, then the next slide will go into that. So the dermal papillae forms the basis of the ridges. So it's what forms your fingerprints. Highlight that, that's a really cool fact. And does anyone know where your fingerprints are actually formed? When they're actually formed? We know where in the dermal papillae of the dermis. Dermis fingerprints, dermis fingerprints. But fingerprints are made when you're in, when you're in your mom's womb. So when you're still uh, in the uterus, in uterine, and the pressure points on the fingers, like as the baby touches the uh, inside of the uterus or maybe the baby touches itself, its own face or whatever, it actually forms the fingerprint. So that's kind of neat. The reticular layer is a deeper layer, and that's where the yucky, not-so-fun-as-fingerprints stretch marks come from. So um, you want to know both of those things, and then... The subcutaneous layer, the layer just below the epidermis. Um, so this is the below the epidermis. We already said uh, that's a layer of fat, a layer of adipose tissue. Um, subcutaneous or hypodermis, you want to know both, is beneath and it's mostly fat. Okay, of that subcutaneous, it does for the third time. Whoops, there we go. For the ter third time, it does have fat, and we know that fat insulates us, helps us stay warm, helps the heat not to leave, right? Contains blood vessels. We already said that. Subcutaneous does have blood vessels. Uh, okay, there's three types of injections. Subcutaneous injections would be beneath the skin. Interdermal injections would be uh, in the skin. And then intramuscular injections would be in the muscle. And so probably the most common one that we think of is intramuscular. So that's going to be when they give you a shot in your arm, your deltoid muscle, or in your booty. That'd be um, your gluteus medius muscle in your booty. So uh, intramuscular would be like where you'd get a steroid shot or a tetanus shot. Okay, so here's just a picture out of your book or um, from your book authors. This shows the epidermis on the top, the dermis in the middle, and subcutaneous on the bottom. So hopefully you're pretty good on that. Now, what else besides skin? What else is there? There's what we call the accessory structures. 
uh, hair follicles, hair, nails, and skin glands, sweat glands and oil glands, right? Okay, so each hair develops from a group of epidermal cells at the base called the hair follicle. And so if you'll look right here in the picture, you can actually see that pink outer layer is the hair follicle. Okay, the hair shaft is what you can actually see. So that's at the very top. Up here above the skin is the hair shaft. And then the the hair root is located down in the dermis. And so where it bulges out, that'd be the hair root. Okay, the hair papillae, not to be confused with dermal papillae. The hair papillae is connective tissue at the deep end of the hair follicle that nourishes the cells. And so look right here. It is that dention in. That, see how the, the red artery goes in? That's feeding nutrients. So hair papillae is where it's getting its nourishment, its oxygen, its food. Okay, um, erector pili muscle, that's going to be this muscle right here. See that red right there? That's the muscle that actually um, it really need when it when that muscle flexes, it causes goosebumps. And so when that muscle flexes, it says attaches to each hair follicle and causes hair to stand on end when the muscle contracts. Okay, so just a couple more clinical notes. And again, I think the page numbers are wrong. I apologize. Jaundice, uh, that's a yellowing of the skin. And it could be caused from a number of reasons. Um, it could be caused from liver failure. And so the skin will have a yellow tint from, you know, maybe hepatitis or alcoholism. But some babies are born with jaundice. And it's because um, their their liver isn't producing the pigment um, bilirubin, and so they'll have a yellowish tint, and they'll sit under a baby tanning bed for a little while. Uh, tattoos, and actually, um, if you'll pause the video and watch that ta that tattoo video, it's a neat video that explains how um, tattoos work and why they're permanent. And then also hair loss. An interesting thing about hair loss, and maybe write this in, it's more common in men... Because it's because the gene, okay, I'm going to go with it again. Its gene is on the X chromosome. And so we know from previous science classes that girls have XX for their 23rd pair of chromosomes and boys have XY. And so if it's on the X, girls have a backup plan. They've got two X's. Boys, however, only have one. So if theirs is mutated, then then they're, you know, they're um, going to get male pattern baldness. And so guys that are watching the video, if you want to think about if you're going to be bald, look at your mama's dad. And if he's got hair, you're good to go. So if you get that um, gene from the X, which you got from your mom, because we know we got you got your Y from your dad. Okay, fingernails. They are the protective covering. We know that, right? It protects the nail plate. Uh, protective covering on the ends and fingers. Each nail consists, the protective part is the nail plate, and underneath it is the nail bed. We probably, at some point in our life, all cut our fingernails too short and um, expose the nail bed. Man, that hurts, doesn't it? Okay, the next one, the lunula, that's that whitish part. Look at the picture right there. Oh, wrong color. Right there. That white moon-shaped, whitish moon-shaped region at the base. And that's where the cells are growing. That's where it's most active. So highlight that. Uh, that's the growing region. So this is just some interesting uh, facts about nails and how the nails can determine um, disorders. And so 
bluish nails, maybe circulatory problems, of course, if, if you haven't had an injury. White nails uh, could be uh, anemia, so lack of iron. And then a pigmented spot um, could even be melanoma. So you can even get melanoma under your nails. So that can kind of help when assessing a patient. Horizontal furrows. Come on. There we go. Horizontal furrows may indicate malnutrition. So um, poor diet, extreme curvature. So when the nails come off, they curve down. Uh, maybe heart, lung, or liver. And then red streaks. Uh, could be arthritis, it could indicate ulcers, uh, or hypertension. So all of those things are kind of helpful when you're looking at patients. Okay, skin glands. There's a couple of different kinds of glands. The first one we'll talk about is this sebaceous gland, and sebaceous glands secrete oil. Sebaceous glands secrete oil. Um, and they're absent on the palms and soles, so they of the feet, hands and feet. Now, sebaceous glands are not our friends because when they become clogged, whoops, they could cause acne. And so sebaceous glands right here become clogged with extra sebum, that's that oil, so extra sebum and epithelial cells, it can cause acne. And um, acne is a disorder of the skin. Uh, it's very common at puberty, common during stressful times. Um, but, you, uh, you know, on both sides of the cheeks or even on the back or chest. But that clogged um, pore can even hurt. Uh, affects 80% of people between the ages of 11 and 30. Um, and then it lists some treatments that, that you can buy over the counter there. But you can also take a drug called Accutane. And Accutane is an oral prescription that's prescribed to females with birth control. And the reason is because it can cause um, development issues, severe development issues, if the girl were to become pregnant. But the acne, the Accutane uh, prevents or reduces the amount of oil from being made. So it really does work, but the side effects are harsh. So be cautious if you were to take that. Okay, holocrine glands are glands that release their entire cells. Um, so they, they release their entire continents. Okay, so different kinds of sweat glands, also called pseudoriferous glands, they're widespread on the skin. So you got sweat glands everywhere. Okay, there's um, two, three different kinds we're going to talk about, actually four different kinds. The first one, ecrin, E-C-C, -C, right? Or merocrine glands, they're the most numerous, they're, that's when you're hot. When you're hot and you sweat, that's why. So know all of that. Uh, apricine glands, those are in the groin, pubic, and even the anal region. Who knew you had sweat glands in your anal region? Well, now you know. And then the arm axillary, that's the armpit region. Um, bacteria degrade the secretion, and they produce a scent, a smell, smelly. So the apricine glands is what is smelly. Okay, serminimus is earwax. And then mammary is milk. So make sure you know all four of those. Ecrin, that's when you're hot. Apricin, that's in all those funky areas, including your armpits, that make a scent. So that should say bacteria degrade the secretion and produce a scent. And then serminimus, you want to know serminimus is earwax. Serminimus is earwax. Mammary, well, that's pretty easy. It's milk. And you can see from this picture, you can see the sebaceous glands, but you can also see the sweat glands. They're right here, that squiggly line. I don't guess it's, oh, there it is. It's labeled right there. Okay, I was going to say I don't guess it's labeled. And there's the glands in a table. I always include the table in case um, for some reason you don't have your book. Okay, so 
Skin is so important for regulating temperature. Like I said on that very first slide, how cold would you be if you didn't have skin, right? Uh, some, some different vocabulary words about skin. Hypothermia is uh, hypo below, too cold, right? Uh, body temperature is below normal. H-Y-P-O means below. But in heart surgery, they may do this on purpose uh, to slow down the heart rate. Um, less oxygen is required that way. Hyperthermia, high, hyper, over. Temperature is too hot. And actually, both of these can be... Um, can can be very serious, right? Hypothermia, we read in the paper or see on TV about people getting lost while snow skiing or mountain climbing or whatever. And then hyperthermia, the thing that always comes to my mind is um, children getting left in cars in the summertime uh, and overheating. And so both of those can be um, lethal. Okay, with elevated body temperatures, uh, loss of the ability of homeostasis. So you got so hot that your body couldn't cool you off. That's what that means. So hot your body couldn't even cool you off. Um, exposure to very high heat can overwhelm uh, temperature control. If body heat builds up faster, then heat can be lost from the body temperature and will rise. And so uh, too high. Fever is actually good. It actually helps... Um, speed up the immune system, uh, but too high can still be dangerous, so uh, you have to be careful with letting your fever get too high. And if you'll pause the video, that's a really neat video about wounds healing, so make sure you watch all the linked videos. I think that's helpful, especially in um, a class where you're watching the videos. Okay, burns. Leading cause of accidental death. And I always think about, you know, we know how it happens. Kitchen fires, burning leaves outside, uh, things like that. Excessive hot water. So we know what, what, what causes um, burns. Uh, burn deaths are primarily due to circulation shock, uh, loss of fluid. Um, that burn, as, as you start to heal, it could get infected. And then um, that some of the tissue that's been burned can continue to die. And so, you know, after you're burned and it's all scraped off, the underlying tissue can continue to die. Can continue to die. But they estimate uh, how much is burned. So they'll say 70% of the body was burned by a rule of nines. And so if you'll look at the person, you know, the arms are nine. Each leg separately is nine. The arms together are nine. Um, the anterior is 18, so 9 times 2. And so that's how they calculate what percent of your body was burned. And so here's this, it's the same picture, but a little different. Okay, three types of burns. First degree, second degree, and third degree. And I know you've heard of those things, and you really want to know this whole slide. So first degree burn injures the, only the epidermis. Um, healing takes... Depends on how bad it is, right? Uh, days or weeks. It could even be a severe sunburn. Okay, or it could be um, a little bit deeper than that. Okay, second degree or partial thickness, you want to know this one, destroys the epidermis and some of the dermis. Um, maybe hot liquid, it may blister, probably swell, um, Stem cells in hair follicles and glands can regenerate skin, so it does make new skin. Uh, interesting thing, it, uh, it recovers from the outsides. So not from the center out, but from the outsides in. Very painful. Superficial and, so first and second degree are both very painful. On third degree, destroys epidermis and dermis. It actually also destroys the hair follicles, so you're probably not going to get hair back. Results from prolonged exposure, so you had to stay in the fire or heat for too long. Uh, healing from the margin, so from the outsides. And then often it may require a skin graft where they take skin from another area of the body and move it in. Um, the interesting thing, very painful, but the interesting thing 
um, is that first and second degrees are both painful, but the third degree, it doesn't even hurt because a lot of times you've um, destroyed the nerves there. Okay, with burn graphs, uh, a homograph would be where you get a graph from an unrelated person, so like a donor. Uh, an autograph would be where they take donated skin from you. A lot of times they'll do it from a back uh, or something like that. Okay, so um, the first and second degree burns, we already said painful. Third is painless. Um, two things. You got you can't let it get dry. You can't let it get dried out. You can't let the person dehydrate, so you have to keep fluid on it. But with fluid comes infection. And so oftentimes they have to worry about an infection setting in. And that's a really interesting video. Make sure you watch that one. Uh, and then just as life as life changes continue, um, the facial wrinkle, so this is the, um, as you get older, uh, Botox from the bacteria Clostridium botulini can, in, can fill in the, and paralyze the, the creases, which can um, remove the, the rash, remove the wrinkles. And so that's kind of interesting, can fill it in. Uh, I know I'll probably... Consider it if I ever get bad wrinkles, right? So something to consider, but it is a bacteria. Okay, and for the last part of this video, I want to go over uh, the rashes, the common skin rashes um, from the integumentary system. Okay, so we know what chickenpox is. Most of us, well, I had chickenpox. Some of you might be too old or too young, uh, but it's little, uh, little spots that itch, and they're all over the body. Um, the little places will blister and they'll itch. You just, you got to wait it out until your immune system takes over. Uh, filth disease, clap cheek appearance, then red spots suddenly cover the entire body. Uh, it lasts about two days. Okay, infantigo, that's a, that's a bacterial infection. So both of these, maybe right in over here, bacteria. Um, so it's like an infection. I remember when I would scratch mosquito bites, my mom would always say, you're going to get impetigo. Okay, Lyme disease. You get Lyme disease from a tick bite. So you want to know that. It's from a tick bite. Right in, tick bite. A large rash resembling a bullseye. So if you ever get bitten by a tick and the next day you notice a rash, you need to go to the doctor because Lyme disease is not something you want to have. Rosola and phantom, high fever, red spots suddenly cover the entire body. Um, this is a um, part of the herpes virus. So it's a viral disease. Scarlet fever, you may have heard of. Uh, rash resembling sunburn uh, with goosebumps just below the ears, on the chest, armpits, uh, and spread to the abdomen. So, uh, and then it may even peel like a sunburn. But it's a bacterial infection. So this is a bac scarlet fever is bacterial. Okay, shingles, that's a virus caused by this same virus, the chickenpox virus. But it causes a, you, uh, you get like a rash on one side of your body or even on your cheek. And um, it says blisters enlarge, become cloudy, crust, then fall off. But instead of itching, this one hurts. And what it is, is from, you got the chicken pox, but you had partial immunity, so you got shingles instead of chicken pox. So it's where your immune system, uh, you didn't have a good immunity against chicken pox. Okay, and then these are just common disorders. You want to read through them. Most of them you've probably heart, heard of. Athlete's feet, that's a fungus. A birthmark, you know what those are. A boil, that's like a big, hard pimple. A carbuncle, same thing, a bacterial infection, very similar to a boil, uh, that spread, but this one spreads, it gets bigger. So a carbuncle, is, it gets real big. A cyst, we've heard of people having cyst, or maybe you've had a cyst. A fluid-filled sac. Okay, eczema is just, you know, itchy rash, it's not contagious. 
erythema, uh, red uh, skin due to dilation of dermal blood, so like a swelling due to injury. Uh, herpes, uh, that's a virus. Infection, you, like, ul you get ulcers around your mouth, that's herpes. Uh, keloid, elevated enlarging fibrous scar. So this one's pretty common, but you'll have like a scar and then what's the enlarged part of the, kilo of the scar is a keloid. A mole, uh, that's a fleshing skin tumor. And you have a funny looking mole, you may need to get it checked out. Okay, pedicubosis, disease produced by an infection of lice, so lice bugs. Puritis, itching of the skin. A pustule as a pussy area, elevated pus. Scabies, uh, that's mites, so you got scabies from mites. Um, Seboria, hyperactive of this, those oil glands, so um, greasy. So, overproduction of oil. An ulcer is just an opening, like in your mouth. You can have ulcers in other places, too, like bed sores or ulcers. Your tisseria, that's just an allergic reaction. And then a wart, um, usually is viral. So, you want to look over all of those, maybe include those in your note cards when you're studying, because this is on the test. It's actually matching on the test. Uh, there are four or five questions from this, so make sure that you study this for your test also. All right, good luck.